Greetings of the day. I am Dr. S. Esther Julia Sujata, Associate Professor of English, Shisharda College for Women, Autonomous, Salem 16. My topic is the themes and the symbols in the poem, The Lady of Charlotte. Here the writer, Alfred Lord Tennyson. His poetry dealt often with the doubts and difficulties of an age in which established Christian faith and traditional assumptions about man's nature and destiny were increasingly called into question by science and modern progress. His poetry dealt with these misgivings, moreover, as the intimate personal problems of a sensitive and troubled individual inclined to melancholy. Through his poetic mastery, the spaciousness and the nobility of his best verse, its classical aptness of phrase, its distinctive harmony, he conveyed to sympathetic readers a feeling of implicit reassurance, even serenity. Tennyson may be seen as the first great English poet to be fully aware of the new picture of man's place in the universe revealed by modern science. Why the contemplation of this unprecedented human situation sometimes evoked his fears and forebodings, it also gave him a large imaginative range than most of the poets of his time and added a greater depth and resonance to his art. <coughs> Let us see the plot of the poem. The Lady of Charlotte Weaving in her tower and isolated under the threat of nameless curse, falls in love with Lancelot. Unable to pursue her love due to strict moral rules, she perishes when she sets sail for Camlet during a storm. Let us see what is presented in part 1. In part 1, the readers are introduced to the mystery of the young lady who is imprisoned on the island of Charlotte in the middle of a river that flows down to Camlet. Few know of her, but early in the morning, reapers can hear her sing a cheery song. They call her the fairy lady of Charlotte. In part 2, the lady of Charlotte weaves a magic colorful web. She has heard a voice whisper that a curse will be fall her if she looks down to Camlet and she does not know what this curse would be. Thus, she concentrates solely on her weaving, never lifting her eyes. However, as she weaves, a mirror hangs before her. In part 3, a knight in brass armor, that is brazen greaves, comes riding through the fields of barley beside Charlotte. The sun shines on his armor and makes it sparkle. As he rides, the gems on his horse's bridle glitter like a constellation of stars and the bells on the bridle ring. As the sky breaks out in rain and storm, the Lady of Charlotte descends from her tower and finds a boat. She writes the words, the Lady of Charlotte, around the boat's bow and looks downstream to Camelot like a prophet foreseeing his own misfortunes. So at the end of the poem, she was died and she, her body was lying on a boat. Let us see what are the themes employed by Lord Tennyson in the poem, The Lady of Charlotte. Isolation, detachment, the supernatural elements, artistic isolation, Victorian women's sexuality, freedom comes at a cost are the major themes of this poem. Let us see what is artistic isolation. Artistic isolation means that an artist must distance themselves from the world in order to truthfully depict it in their work. Here, the titular lady is confined to a fairy tale tower where she endlessly weaves a gorgeous tapestry and watches the world go by in a magic mirror. She is under a mysterious curse and only finds out 
what it is when she looks away from her work and out her window into the real world the thing she sees there the gorgeous sir launcelot and the bustling commercial everyday world of camelot spell her doom the lady's curse which demands that she focuses all her attention on images is the curse of the artist for whom observing the world can make fully experiencing the world impossible victorian anxiety about women's sexuality is one of the themes employed by lord tennyson in the poem it is not just plain curiosity that at last pulls the lady away from her loom but also sexuality in the form of the dreamy sir lancelot riding by sexuality here is presented as an image of deep involvement in the world and therefore as the strongest possible temptation it is also something dangerous the poem suggests destroying not just the lady herself but also the art she makes of course that the lady is a lady speaks to a particularly victorian anxiety about women sexuality which was heavily policed for victorian women virginity was idealized and desire demonized the poem suggests that such repression is fated to fail however and that restrained sexuality becomes a destructive force when when it inevitably breaks through the next theme is the supernatural elements though the source is never explicitly defined or acknowledged the poem contains a supernatural undercurrent the lady's life is ruled by a curse of unknown origin that forbids her from interacting with the world outside of her town she spends her days weaving a magic web based on the sight she sees in her mirror a kind of supernatural craft in both instances in which someone directly reacts to the lady it is with a sense of fear or awe the reapers dub her a fairy and the knights of camelot cross themselves out of fear the perception of the supernatural serves as a barrier between the lady and human connection isolating her not only physically but also conceptually one of the theme is freedom comes at a cost the author talks about freedom but it is not um, uh, comes casually but it uh, it costs the value of human being it costs the value of life regardless of lens with which readers approach the lady of charlotte the concept of freedom is is a recurrent end goal the lady is isolated in a tower and is subject to a curse that tells her she cannot look at camelot except in her mirror the essential idea is that she is restricted she is unable to pursue something that she wants the price of looking out the out of the window at camelot as a lady finds out is death whether it is the victorian woman seeking social agency the artist reaching for human connection or an ostracized person looking for social acceptance the choice is the same it remains safely in ensconced in the lonely tower or chase freedom at the cost of life itself so cost of uh, freedom at the cost of life itself is the, the one of the prominent themes of the lady of charlotte let us see what are the symbols employed by lord tennyson in the poem the lady of charlotte weaving the mirror launcelot camelot atom and the harvest flowers fire and light these are the symbols employed by the poet weaving the lady is weaving is symbolic of the act of creating art there is literal meaning as well as symbolic here of course the lady is actually weaving actually creating art but tennyson could have made her a painter or a musician or any sort of artist 
but why he has employed her as a weaving uh, something for one thing weaving is a process of bringing many threads together into one big piece sometimes life itself is described as a tapestry for just this reason it is made of all kinds of different things brought together into a whole one also needs to step back remain at a distance to see that whole and not just its individual threads perhaps like the lady must remain apart from the world in order to observe it so this is the symbol employed by the author that is weaving and also the mirror the weaving work and also the mirror that is through the mirror she could observe the world the mirror mirrors have long been associated with magic with the self and with the complexity of truth it is also worth noting that one of the big things a person sees upon looking into a mirror is themselves the lady's interpretation of the world is transmitted through a picture that is also her own image so the mirror becomes a magical one when the lady looks into her magic mirror and weaves what she sees there she is making an image of an image but making any kind of art is making an image of an image artist perceive the world through their own mirror their own frame of reference then they represent what they see in this way the mirror further suggests the inherent subjectivity of art that it is inevitably a reflection reflection of the artist's own perception of the world let us see lancelot lancelot is a uh, very bold brave knight he is a symbol of everything a chivalrous knight is meant to be meant to be to a woman while also concealing the warning that this gorgeous image can't survive life as it is really lived this is not to say that his beauties are an illusion lancelot is a great knight and indeed he is the only knight who rises to the occasion with the words of pity and a blessing when the lady's corpse floats into camlet camlet is the destructions of the real world beyond the lady's tower king arthur's court at camlet is a place of life it is bustling rich and populous full of beautiful towers and well to do citizens but it is also a place that doesn't really know what to do with someone like the lady of shalott in fact contact with this busy world kills her camlot is of course highly romantic a city of knights and chivalry but it is also a place of politics commerce family party eating drinking and sex the real world that as an artist the lady is forever forbidden from entering the author has presented atom and also the harvest atom all the sumptuous real world distraction in which the lady cannot partake the poem also implies or linked to death and decay the fleeting nature of the world sensual delights the lady of shallot is in is set in the fullest richest part of early atom when the harvest is coming in the air is cooling and the sky is bright and blue but as john keats will tell you if atom is a season of fruitfulness it is also a season of melancholy perfect ripeness that is just about to tip over into over ripeness then rot then winter's death the poem talks of reapers might remind the reader that the most famous of reapers is the grim one atom the lady cannot enter an autumnal world herself and survive charlotte is covered in summer lilies her artistic world is preserved in a timeless statism things never change but that also means they never die as soon as she breaks from her work to look out her window atom shows its more ominous face 
When she leaves the tower, a storm is brewing, and the yellow leaves of the woods are being torn away in the winds. The poem's autumnal setting thus links to the world of Camelot, coming in contact with life, sex, fullness, and ripeness. Also, inevitably means coming in contact with death. Flowers. If autumn and harvest represent a sort of overripeness as well as connection between sensuality and decay, the flowers essentially represent the opposite in the poem. They are symbolic of youth, purity, and unspoiled fertility on both an artist and a sexual level. Phrases like the bloom of youth, which connotes a sense of fertile freshness here that bloom is at least on one level connected to the creation of art a space of flowers that means it is the symbol of fertility the lady is surrounded by a space of flowers where the lilies blow which suggests that charlotte in its separation from the decay of the rest of the world is a place of creative abundance and is linked with fertility as well. Indeed, she is fertile in the sense that she weaves, she creates day and night. She is also artistically pure in the sense of being free from worldly distractions that might could that might cloud her ability to create truthful art. Fire and light. Fire and light represents vivacity and sexuality. The fire is thus closely connected to Sir Lancelot, who, as previously noted in this guide, is the embodiment of masculinity, chivalry, and sexual temptation. Whenever Lancelot is described, he is linked with heat and light, the dazzling sunlight that shines, that shines down on him seems to set his brazen greaves basically his shin gods aflame his shield sparks his gemmy bridle glitters like stars giant balls of fire in the golden galaxy and both his helmet and the feather atop it burns like one burning flame so these are the images utilized by of the author about fire and light while describing Lancelot. Light. Lancelot moves through the dark night like a meteor, trailing light and his brow glows in the sunshine. Even his dark curls are linked to fire, described as being black as coal, something burnt for fuel. Coal is utilized for creating fuel. He is positively brimming with light with life and lust. Fire and light reflect his inescapable allure, the way the lady feels pulled towards his figure. She positively burns for him but gets too close to the flame. In the end, the lady's blood freezes. Her eyes darken as she dies, the fire of life leaving her forever. Let me conclude my topic by saying that in this uh, poem, we have seen many themes and many different um, symbols employed by the poet Lord Tennyson. Thank you.